I've done an absolute load of suspension mods on my Porsche 996. So I've had new coilovers fitted, I've had new anti-roll bars fitted, I've had all the bushes replaced with polybush. Has it been worth it? Let's find out. There were two reasons for having the upgrades. The first was that after 18 years, the original suspension would be well past its best. The second, well out of the factory, the 996 was set up to understeer to make it far more benign than its tail-happy predecessors. So driving on what would be a traditional British B road on the normal suspension, the one thing you'd definitely notice is that the nose does start to run wide if you get on the throttle and you can notice a little bit of body roll on it as well. <laughs> yes, and it's all right. It's, it's reasonably good fun. It just doesn't feel quite as sporty as you might imagine a 911 to feel. I wanted to sharpen up my 996, so headed to Porsche Specialists and part supplier Design 911 in Brentwood, Essex for some help. This is Keith Davies and fellow technicians Gary O'Brien and Roy Acker. They will be making my car not just drive like new, but actually better than new by fitting all these parts. So then, Keith, we've got some parts we're going to fit to the car. Can you just talk me through what we've chosen and why? OK, so we've got the Olin's DFE uh, coilover kit. Um, Olin's have developed this quite cleverly, actually. So the compression and rebound adjustments are all done with one movement at the top. So as you adjust the compression, the rebound's adjusted at the same time. It's quite clever how it works inside as well. So if you've got like a, a low-speed compression situation, say you're in turning, it leaves the valves closed so you don't get the full release for, the, for your compression. And then obviously if you hit a bump or something like that, it allows the valve to open and it allows the shock absorber to work as it should. Quite ah, so basically, it's called road and track, this, isn't it? It is, yeah, so, so it's suitable it's for both. So it's firm when you need, it needs to be, and then it's compliant when you need it to be when you're basically, on the road. Basically, yeah, yeah, it's very clever what they've done with these, actually, yeah. And the other it's half good. of the coilover situation yeah. are the springs. They are slightly shorter and stiffer than a standard road spring. The more spring action you've got, the more preload you've got onto that corner, you're pushing the wheel into the ground for your grip. And it stops the roll as well? It does, yes. When you, obviously, when you lean in, obviously it's more of a force to, to compress, so you've got a slightly slightly stiffer ride, yeah. Most of the technology is in the damper, not the spring these days. Obviously you can adjust this to be as firm as or soft as you want it to be for your road use. Then obviously it's a simple adjustment if you want it like a sportier feel or if you're doing a track bed, etc. you can then make it even more stiffer for, for your particular driving style. So in theory, this system could actually be more comfortable on the road than my current setup? It could be, yeah. You can set it up to how you want it, yeah. Next we've got the sway bars. So the idea behind these, especially this one, you've got uh, four adjustments. We can effectively adjust how stiff and how soft the car is when you lean into a corner. So it's adjustable? This one's adjustable, yeah. And it's made yeah. by who? This is a turret engineering sway bar. They're slightly stiffer and thicker than a standard bar. Well, it's going to result in less roll? Basically, yeah, yeah. And obviously because you can adjust it, you can have it as soft or as stiff again as you like. If your car is understeery, it might be because your roll bar is slightly too stiff at the front. So as you're turning in, it's too stiff compared to how the back is with your balance. You can then move it forward so you go slightly softer. It allows the weight to sort of transfer onto the tire more and you get more grip so it doesn't sort of wash out. So that's quite light, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this hollow? Light. Uh, I believe so, yes, they are hollow. And the good thing about it being hollow is that it adds less weight, less unsprung mass to the car. That's it, so you've got less unsprung weight in the car as well because of the because of the weight loss, yeah. Is that like the GT3 Agile was? They're, they're hollow as well, aren't they? They are very similar, yeah, but they have slightly different the way the, um, the adjustment's done on the end. Okay, is there anything else to fit with the anti roll bar? Can I just bottom uh, it straight on? No, so the idea is you have an adjustable link because your shock absorbers are height adjustable. If you've got ever so slight difference in height left to right, you'll end up with a preload if you put your standard links back on. So you have the weight of the car on the floor and then you adjust these. So these just slot in without any preload on at all. So when you actually turn the car, that's when they start to work. Okay, so that the anti-roll bar isn't actually stressed when you're just Exactly going that, straight. exactly. So when you're in a straight line, if the roll bar's got a bit of load on it, you're gonna have a bit more sprung weight on one wheel than the other and okay. it will affect the way the car feels. So these just sort of eliminate that as well. Let's have a feel at that. That's oh nice, God. lightweight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nice, lightweight as well, yeah. I bet the, the original ones on the card are as nice as this. That's it, yeah, and they've got, oh, you've got your horrible ball joints on the top, but these are also spherical joints as well, so there's, there's less actual movements. So when you first turn, you haven't got the ball joint trying to move first. Either. So it should make it feel sharper? Yeah, exactly, yeah. There. Okay, so what's the last thing we've got? Uh, last thing to do is your poly bushes on the car. Um, these Powerflex bushes, they do two options, the purple ones which are for road use, and then they do a black edition for for your race cars and experienced track day guys. Polyurethane, so it's a lot stiffer than a standard bush. They're looking to last a lot longer. They're not gonna wear out as quick. They're gonna last longer than the car. <laughs> <laughs> Keith and his team set about installing all the parts on my 911. But as is typical when working on old cars, the job took longer than expected. 
So Keith, that's the installation done. Yeah. How did it go? Yeah, it's quite a long couple of days, but we got there in the end. Um, so from top to bottom, we started with stripping each corner off side by side, um, replacing the uh, shock absorbers and the, the spring assemblies with the Olin's coilovers. Well, that's probably the simplest bit of the job, really, because it comes pretty much preset. Just a case of swapping over your top mounts and bearings. Obviously, you had new on that as well, just to be on the safe side while it's apart. Um, and then it's bolting it back up, so that's probably the easiest part. Um, then obviously the roll bars, relatively straightforward, just two or three bolts each side at the front. The links with the final adjustment once the setup and the ride light's all been finalised, so there's no preload as we discussed earlier. So fitting the coilover and anti roll bar, relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bushes though? The bushes on the front, not too bad. Uh, I say with the ones with the camber adjustment, the as we found out, the when you push the bush out, the actual outer casing tends to stay in the arm. So then obviously it's then a case getting hammers and chisels out to remove that before you replace, replace the bush. I also saw some sparks flying as well. Yeah, that was on the back of the car mainly. <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, due to the age of the car unfortunately, there's a lot of things seized in. So obviously to, to make it easier to press them out, you end up grinding tops and bottoms off so we can get some decent pressing action going on to get the bush out. So there's not that many bushes on the front of the car here? No, it's really you've just got, it's just the coffin arm ones really. So you've got the one at the front here, then the, then the inner the inner bush. That's really it for poly bushes. Um, normally you would do the roll bar ones, but obviously the turret kit come with, come with bushes. So the back though? The back is a different story, yeah. <laughs> that's, where the, look at it. that's where the fun starts, yeah. Because obviously you've got multi-link rear suspension here, so there's more Links to yeah, start so you have two top arms. So obviously, you've got uh, two bushes in each arm, so four bushes at the top. Again, another coffin arm, so you've got inner and outer bushes on there as well. Um, and also, your track control arm with a bush in the middle. Um, and then you finally, you've got your actual main subframe uh, bushes, there's three of those on each side as well. So, yeah, there's lots of uh, grinding and uh, oxygen settling torches, and unfortunately, an incident with Gary hurting his hand with a a large hammer at one point. So the bushes, they're not something you can do yourself at home? Uh, right? I wouldn't recommend it at home, no, not at all. Unless you've got like a mini workshop set up in your garage or something with a press and oxygen settling and a vice. And, and a Gary. Very, and, and a Gary, you can throw <laughs> hammers around and hurt yourself, yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't, was not saying I'd recommend doing it at home, no. How about the actual bushes when you took them out? What was the condition like? Um, that's all quite well worn, to be honest. A lot of them had like, perished quite severely. So considering the time and the cost of fitting the bushes, is it something people do still? Um, some people do, yeah. I mean, generally, because it is these arms that take the load, people generally do sometimes upgrade the lower arm, like the coffin arm bushes and things. But to do the whole vehicle like this, purely because the labour involved, people tend to, to not bother. OK. So they might just go for some of the key bushes. I just went the whole hog, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did the whole lot, because I think you want to keep us busy. But we're, uh, <laughs> but we're uh, yeah, generally it's the lower arms, because they're, they're prone to going anywhere on these cars. What is the next step you've got to do? Uh, OK, so we've got a few rounds of tries and bits and bobs to finish off under here. And then uh, we'll get it down, get it on the road, give it a little road twist, get it a shake down, get the wood suspension settled. Then it'll be back in on the flat patch, ready to do setup. And then I can drive it. And then you can drive it and see what the difference is, yeah. The car was taken out to settle the suspension before Keith and the guys did four-wheel alignment, the old school way, using rulers and string, just like they use on the race cars they prepare. Apparently this method is actually more accurate than using lasers. Finally, my 996 was ready. So, was it worth it? My biggest concern when I was getting this suspension overhauled was that it would ruin the ride quality. But you know what? It has made it way, way better. Now I'll admit that it's firmer. It definitely feels firmer, but it's still more comfortable. This, this suspension just deals so much better with bumps. Another thing worth noting are the bushes. So I wasn't sure the effect they'd have, but my God, if you want to make your old car feel like new, you're going to need some new bushes. You see, I've got another car, a Mazda MX-5, and I had its suspension done as well, coilovers. But while it handled better and gripped better, it never felt like a new car because there was still slop in the steering and in the suspension because I didn't replace the bushes. And that was a mistake. Well, I know it now, having driven this car, this Porsche, with upgraded bushes, it makes a huge difference. Obviously, the main reason for doing the suspension, though, is to improve the handling. As standard, this 996 was very much an understeery kind of car. They did that to make the car as safe as possible. But now, <laughs> with the help of the sportier anti-roll bars, it just grips so much better. And it's not the fact that it grips, I can feel exactly what the front and rear tyres are doing beneath me. So I'm just so in tune with the car, there's so much feedback through it. 
much better than many modern cars. I absolutely love it. This is exactly <laughs> what you want a 911 to feel like. <laughs> My God. I can't explain how over the moon I am with how the suspension upgrades have transformed the car into exactly what I dreamt it would be. It's awesome. It is awesome. This before and after slalom test lets you see how the coilovers and anti-roll bars really sharpen the car's handling and cut, body roll and understeer. Also, after the modifications, under acceleration the car doesn't pitch as much thanks to the stiffer springs and lower ride height. These also reduce diving under braking, thereby making the car more stable. This improved handling comes at a cost though. You're looking at around £4,000 for all the parts I have here. If you follow the links below the video, you can see their current prices. Then there's the labour, which you'll need to add on top, and that will depend on how easy your old components are to remove. And when you add it all up, it comes to quite a lot of money to spend on some old 996, which after all, is the least love 911. But then you do end up with something rather unique. Well, I think what they've done is made this feel like a brand new car. Not a new modern car, like a new older car. And what I mean by that is that it feels responsive, you feel everything that's going on, and it feels like it's just come out of the factory, but it has all the qualities that made older cars slightly more enjoyable to drive than the most modern ones. So it's just pure, it's fearsome. It hasn't got too much power, but it's got enough. And yeah, it's an absolute blast. I am absolutely delighted. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on the windows to watch more videos about my Porsche 911 996.